welcome to the AI Explained series. My name is Mary Reagan, and I'm a data scientist at Fiddler. Today we're going to be talking about bias and fairness, in particular where bias can creep into your machine learning pipeline, and some common definitions of fairness, including group and individual fairness. Let's get started. A general overview of bias and fairness. The use of machine learning in AI systems has grown substantially over the last decade. During that time, we've also seen many missteps. These reveal large biases in these systems that ultimately are contributing to creating a society that's not fair for everyone. As data scientists, we should use the guiding question. How do we develop AI systems that help make decisions leading to fair and equitable outcomes? This means making efforts to address bias in our machine learning pipeline. Bias can exist in many shapes and forms, many of which can lead to unfairness in different downstream learning tasks. In fact, bias can in be introduced at any stage in our pipeline. The original source of bias comes from the world. Our society is biased, and this bias often becomes encoded in the data we've collected. Of course, as individual data scientists, we can't address all the systemic biases that exist in the world. But we can look for bias that's become encoded in our data. We can check for bias in our model and in the human review process. Let's walk through a few examples of the types of bias that can be introduced along this path. Here are some examples of bias in data. Historical bias is the already existing bias in the world that seeped into our data. This bias can occur even given perfect sampling environments and feature selection. Historical bias will most often show up for groups that have been historically disadvantaged or excluded from certain activities. An example of this type of bias can be found in Google's text embedding models, which led to results like these examples of gendered occupation, and to the analogy, man is to computer programmer as woman is to homemaker. These results were only a reflection of the existing gender bias in our language. Representation bias happens from the way we define and sample from a population. An example of this is the data that was first used to train facial recognition systems. Those mostly relied on white faces, leading to a model having difficulty recognizing black or other dark skinned faces. Another example is data sets that are collected through smartphone apps. These data sets can underrepresent lower income and older groups who are less likely to own smartphones. Measurement bias occurs when choosing or collecting features and labels to use in prediction problems. Easily available data are often noisy proxies for the features and labels of interest. It's really important to note that measurement processes and data quality often vary across different groups. A model that's trained on biased data can lead to inaccurate predictions, but some of these can have extremely serious consequences. For example, in predictive policing application, arrest rates are often used as proxy for crime rates. These are then used to predict the riskiness for prison recidivism. Since minority communities are highly policed and therefore have higher arrest rates than white communities, this is a very problematic choice. The recidivism risk prediction tool COMPAS led to higher false positive rates for black versus white defendants. Now, even if we have perfect data, our model can introduce bias. Evaluation bias occurs during model iteration and evaluation. A model is optimized on training data, but its quality is often measured on benchmarks. Bias can arise when testing or benchmark samples do not equally represent various parts of the larger population. It can also arise from performance metrics that are not appropriate for the way in which the model will be used. An example of this is the benchmarks used in the development of facial recognition systems, which did not represent the general population. Aggregation bias arises during model construction when distinct populations are inappropriately combined. There are many applications where the population of interest is heterogeneous and a single model is unlikely to suit all groups. An example of this is with diabetes patients. HbA1c levels are used to measure blood glucose and are widely used in diagnosis and monitoring. 
These levels are different in complicated ways across gender and ethnicities. Here, a single model would not be the best choice. Human review. Lastly, even if your model is making correct predictions, the human reviewer can introduce their own biases at the final step. An example of this might be where a human reviewer overrules a correct model prediction based on their own societal bias saying something to the effect of, I know that demographic, and they never perform well. These are just a few examples of bias. Our list is not meant to be comprehensive, and we recommend that you practice your own due diligence when creating your systems. Addressing bias is important when trying to create fair machine learning, but let's examine what we mean when we say the word fair. There's no universally agreed upon definition of fairness. Very broadly, we can define fairness as the absence of prejudice or preference for an individual or group based on their characteristics. Let's look at two common notions of fairness, individual versus group fairness. Take this data set. Here we have two classes of labeled data and are interested in creating a binary classification model. We create the model, determine a decision boundary based on this data. We believe we have a very accurate predictions based on this boundary. However, in fact, this data included two different groups, a green and a blue group. These groups could represent any of the protected classes, such as race, gender, sexual orientation, or disability status. They could represent different geographical or temporal group representations, such as morning versus evening users. With this information, we see that these two groups are experiencing very different outcomes based on our decision boundary. This could be a representation of aggregation bias for diabetes patients. Recall, aggregation bias happens when incorrect conclusions are drawn for a subgroup, in our case the green group, based on false assumptions about the population. The blue and the green group have very different probability distributions for their HbA1c levels. Using a single threshold for these two groups would lead to poor health outcomes. This leads us to a machine learning best practice, which is to make sure your predictions are calibrated for each group. Correctly calibrated probability means that the probability reflects the likelihood of true events. If your scores aren't calibrated for each group, it's likely that you're either systematically over or underestimating the probability of the outcome for one of your groups. One could decide with our new information that each group should get its own decision boundary which is more fair for our groups than a single threshold. This makes sense in the case of our health example, but could also be useful in other cases, especially when addressing systemic or historical bias. Now, in other cases, these new thresholds often leave us with a new problem, and that is one of individual fairness. These individuals are very similar and yet are being treated very differently. There's often a tension between group and individual fairness. Now hopefully we have a better understanding of where bias can be introduced in our machine learning pipeline and the definitions of group and individual fairness. In future videos, we'll introduce the idea of intersectional fairness and go through different metrics to address these problems. Thanks for joining us.